previously on Sailing Catalpa. We leave Australia and start our ocean crossing to Indonesia. Have no wind until some storms appear on the radar. So we're right in the middle of a storm, big thunderstorm. We don't have too many places to turn. The wind's actually on the beam a little bit. And I've got an oil field and an oil rig um, over here. So we want to stay well clear of all that. But uh, yeah, the wind's changed and pushed us down a little bit towards these. And yeah, a little bit scary. It was about 8.30. We've gone through about, I don't know how many storms today, babe? Oh, uh, I don't know, it's scary. So, so like the- 25 knots of wind, we're in the middle of a storm, we've got oil fields next to us. We've gone a little bit north on our path due to the wind change, but- And this morning was like total opposite. We had no wind, it was like a milk pond. We actually stopped and had a swim and a bit of a stand up paddleboard around. It was like the flattest ocean you've ever seen and uh, this afternoon it's all just turned around we've got the motor running so we can stay on on course and uh, hopefully we're hoping the wind stays but the storms kind of drift away that'd be that'd be ideal It's Wednesday morning. We had a bit of a rough night last night and it's turned back into a, a glassy no wind morning. We had a few storms to contend with last night. Um, that was alright, we had some wind. Now we got no wind. So we're motoring again. last night and I smelt this funny burning smell and what had happened was we had a short in one of the nav lights and you can see I've sort of had a clean up here it's all just disintegrated this little LED light um, and it was melting I could smell it so we ended up losing one light halfway through the passage and then towards the end of the passage the other light went so this morning's job was just to bodge up because I don't know where we're going to get a new nav light in Kupang. Hopefully there's somewhere, but otherwise, I've just run some new wires. I've used some heat shrink and goo and some special little heat shrink joiners. So I've had to rerun all that. They were just all crimped wires and pretty dodgy. And then I didn't have a spare light, but I actually had a spare white light, which is a 360 light, the green light. So I've blacked out two bits of it. I've painted with Bella's nail polish on the front of it. You actually look at the front, it's actually on, so there's a, it's meant to be a 360 white light. So I've just put black over that, black over the other side, and green on the front. So a little bit of nail polish, and we should have a green and red light to get us out of trouble. So, oops. You're so clever. At least we've got lights. We're coming into Indo now and we'd sort of want to be seen. And we're still uh, motoring. There's not much wind. We've got the sails up but we've just got the motor in gear. So it's pushing us along a little bit. And hope that no one finds us. It's just you and me tonight. It's right. Our souls will dance above. The 
when we're flying on a star. Take a look at where we are. See how far we've come since the last begun. We stole each other's hearts. I wouldn't trade it for the world to be a second away from you, girl. This is living a life with my best friend, my wife, forever and ever more. My heart beats a tune It goes a little something like Do-do-do-do-do-do Oh yeah My heart sings for you It goes a little something like I love So today we're having barbecue cray tail And fish I don't know what fish it is. It was in the freezer. Some kind of reef fish. Look at that. Oh yeah. Look at where we are. In the middle of the ocean. Beautiful. Barbecue cray tail. Fish and crays. What's that, a bit of dirty coral trout or? No, it didn't, it didn't feel like that. No? Oh, yeah. it must just be a bit of that spangled emperor. So that lunch today, cray tails, great oh. fish. So it's night four and we've had a beautiful day, not much wind again. We had a swim today that was really nice and we've just been having a bit of a crazy day but Lee and I didn't sleep which was stupid so we're pretty tired and it's just about to start the night and it looks like there's some fronts coming in so we could be in for another night like last night which might be fun but you live and you learn when you are doing a passage, you need to sleep. And Lee also just found something leaking at the back of the boat, which we're hoping is not the generator. So there's always something going on on a boat. So the leaky thing at the back of the boat, we think is the generator and um, it's not starting. A look at this face of relief. <laughs> so it's night four. If somebody won't check the one on their day. And we just had two fishing boats go past. They weren't close enough for me to film. But um they're the first boats we've seen. Oh we saw another one. Uh, seen a few. Seen a few. Seen oh we've seen heaps, sorry everybody. Seen heaps of them. I've only seen one. <laughs> but where they are is it's really shallow, so it goes from like 200 meters. There's, to... uh, there's pinnacles all through there, so it'd be really good fishing. It's like 12 meters, 20 meters, and then it drops down to about 300. So just like mountains under the water, and then another couple of kilometers over here, and we're in like a kilometer of water. So yeah, we were hoping that we were going to be on top of the where it drops to 13, well, where it comes up to 13 meters. In time to have a little bit of a swim and a snorkel and have a look at it, because that would have been cool. But it was a little late for that. It's day five and it's about lunchtime. We've, uh, Finally got some wind that we've been sailing all day. So going about five knots straight behind us. It's absolutely beautiful. We're going wing on wing. 
and yeah, we finally got some sailing time. Lee's just cooking up our last bit of uh, Australian beef. And we should arrive in Kupang early in the morning, so we think about 2 or 3 a.m. Um, not ideal, but we'll work it out. And that's about all we had. Last night was pretty calm, we motored most of the time. And that's about it. Oh, right, last bit of beef. Oh, Rissell's oh, down. No. Some wrist cells? No, I lie. I think there's some in the freezer. Okay. Maybe. Big, uh, I fill it in the, in the freezer. I don't, I don't think there's that, but... Anyway, you can enjoy these today. Before it's nasi goreng, mi goreng. Mmm. Mmm. Very Alright. So we're gonna have lunch. And... What have we got to go with our burgers? We found a little bit of our last of our bread. We've got some sprouts and cheese, tomato, cucumber, the lettuce. Delicious. I'm gonna have potatoes instead of meat, but these guys will enjoy it. So I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but we can see land. Land ahoy! It's about 4:30. 5. 5:15. 5 5:15. And we've been at sea for five days. Is that all? Is it day five? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, five. Five days, and uh, we're 50 nautical miles away from Indonesia. Where are we? Yeah, we're just outside of West Timor. We're going to come in here, and we're going to come up into Kupang. We're going to head through the Roti Strait, and. Obviously check in here and then we're going to come down here and have a surf and chill out. Yeah, so we're going to go check in at Kupang and then we're going to go to Roti. Does it take seven days to check in? No, no we should have done it in a day. Oh, really? So we're all very excited. It's all weird, actually, that we're here in another country. It's a bit surreal. We don't know what to expect with check in. We have no idea. We know very little language. <laughs> Go and throw us some Indonesian words. Uh, Selma Pagi. What's that? I don't know. Good morning. Uh, no, Selma Pagi. Pagi. Selma Pagi. Kabar. Yeah. What's that? I made up words. That's how are you? How are you? So the sun's setting on our final night. On passage to Indonesia, we can now see Indonesia, and we're like 25 nautical miles from coming into near the land, and then we're about 20 nautical miles to Kupang Anchorage, which means we'll get in, we think, around 2 a.m. So it's exciting, but you did it across an ocean. Made it. Just about made it. Just, just about. about there. It's really weird because it just feels like we're coming into port, but yeah. we're going into another country, which An is interesting experience ahead. Yeah. Checking in, customs, and all the rest of it. Just hope it goes we got it all right. Don't know how wrong you can go, but <laughs> apparently you can. Apparently you can go very wrong. So we've just arrived in Kupang in Indonesia. It's like 3 a.m. in the morning and uh, we've just come in the dark, haven't really seen much. Just uh, lots of lights, lots of uh, boats, boat lights. Um, but yeah, we got here safely and we're anchored up and I'm gonna go to bed So I'm super tired. So hopefully we can check in and get cleared in tomorrow and everything goes smoothly. All right, good night. Below our courtesy Indonesian flag, we put up our quarantine flag. So we arrived into Kupang last night about 3 a.m. And anchored in the night. So it was interesting coming in because all we could see was lights. We couldn't actually see anything. So this morning we woke up and it's very cool. It's a surreal experience waking up and being here. Arriving last night, we saw lots and lots of boats that were lit up like Christmas trees and we could hear the music from ashore. But seeing it all in the day made it more real.
the smells of Asia and the sounds of busy streets across the water and the anticipation of what happens next as this is our first time entering another country on our boat. The unknown is always a little daunting. So Lee's just getting ready, he's going to go over. We've been sitting here since early hours of the morning and no, no one's come out to the boat so he's going to go ashore. Go visit quarantine and all those places, hopefully, because it is Friday and they say not to arrive on a Friday. So they say not to do it. It takes half a day to a day. We've got a few hours. So we're on a mission to see if it can be done. Yeah. Everyone says it can't be, so might be a sad face later or be a happy face later. Yeah, he's going to go have a shot anyway. So we've got quarantine, customs and immigration, and then we just got to give 24 hours notice for the harbour master, which is fine because we mowed it a fair bit from Australia, so we're going to need to get some diesel. Solo. Or solar. And uh, benzene is our petrol. You don't need petrol, you're going to row in the shore, are you? Yeah, I've got the t oars out today, half paddles. A bit broken, but they'll do the job. Alright. Right, over to roll. Got to get going. Good luck. <laughs> With half an oar. <laughs> there you are. I don't know how to use these things. I'm going around in a circle. What the? These things are foreign. Come on now. Didn't you row it through? Right. A bit nervous. Good luck. So off Lee went with his backpack full of all our paperwork and documents needed to check in. So fingers crossed we can do all our check ins today. But it's funny, you look over here and it looks like there's no one around. But you look in the binoculars, there's heaps of people over there. And uh, they will be loving Lee coming in. <laughs> Lee was greeted with some helpful guys that spoke really good English. They offered the service of being an agent. Lee opted to do it all himself, but took the offer up of one using one of their drivers. It costs about 40 Australian dollars. He drove Lee to all the places that he needed to go and it took about four hours. It was a pretty smooth process and it helped having all the right paperwork ready to go and a driver who knew exactly where to go and what to do. So join us next time as the kids and I join Lee ashore and check out Kupang for the first time. Customs board our boat and we are free to explore the islands of Indonesia. First stop, Roti Island. Oh, it all comes all thanks to you all. Oh, thanks to y'all.